Hi everyone, uh, welcome to part two of this mask project. Uh, what I want to do today is to turn this breadboarded circuit into a actual device that you can wear, uh, that you can take to parties and, and scare people with. Um, and the way I'm gonna do that, I think, is to make a little electronics enclosure for this. Uh, that can be attached to the elastic strap on the back here. So put that on the back of your head with the electronics box sat on there. Uh, the idea being that um, it's a little bit, it's more self-contained. And then this is going to be powered um, externally from a USB power bank uh, via the USB port here on the uh, Arduino Nano. So here are the components that I want to use. Um, I've got the Nano itself, got a little microphone here as well. It's not a particularly brilliant one. Uh, it's a Max 4466. Um, it's not brilliant, but I've got one and it does do the job. At the moment, the mask has a single button on it, which you can press to change the mode, to change the pattern that's occurring on the mask. Um, I'm also going to add another couple of buttons here as well. Uh, the idea being that we want to change the brightness of, of the LEDs, because obviously it depends on what kind of situation you're in, uh, depends on what brightness you need. Um, when we're doing sound reactive patterns, I'm gonna use these two buttons instead uh, to control the sound sensitivity um, of the microphone. So let's mock up how I basically want this to work. So if we have our um, Nano in the center just here, and that's gonna go at the back, and I say we're gonna power it via a USB cable into here. Uh, and then I think we'll take the microphone, and the microphone can sit somewhere like this, I guess, behind the, the Nano. Uh, and then I want to have these buttons through the side of the box here so we can control them, even when they're on the back of your head. So if I put this something like this, Okay, so this is basically what I'm uh, what I'm aiming for. Uh, we're gonna build a little enclosure around this. Um, and then as I say, we're gonna have a, the top piece, I think we'll have it curved so that it fits nicely onto the back of your head. Um, if that doesn't make any sense at all, um, hopefully you'll see what I mean in a few minutes. So what we'll do now is we'll fire up Fusion and uh, we'll get modeling, see if we can make something. One eternity later. So after spending way too long in Fusion, um, this is what I've come up with. Uh, I'm still quite new to 3D modeling, so this takes a lot longer than it uh, than it would do for someone with a bit more experience. Um, you can see this curved surface here. This is going to fit across the back of the head. Uh, you can see these three holes at the front. These are going to be the three buttons. You'll have mode uh, and plus and minus. I'm not sure which way around we're going to do that just yet. If we go around to this side, we've got a hole for the microphone to stick out of. Uh, this hole here um, and we've got a little hole here this is where the uh, positive lead is going to come out and connect to the the leds on the mask and then on this side uh, we've got another hole for the arduino usb port and we have two more holes here one for the uh, negative lead and one for the the signal wire that actually goes to the leds themselves and you can see there's a slot on this side and a slot on this side and this is where the elastic is going to go through uh, to attach that to the back of your head let's open this up so we can have a slightly better look Okay, in fact, let's just uh, get rid of this. So this is what it looks like on the inside. Uh, this is where the Arduino is going to sit, and you can see that the USB port is going to stick out of that hole in the end. Then we have these two sort of standoffs here, and this is where that piece of proto board is going to slot in. Now that's going to be quite tricky to get in, I imagine, because the board has to slot in downwards like this, but the little at the end of the button still have to stick through these holes. So I'm not sure how that's going to work, but I'll give that a little go and see what happens. Uh, and then I've got two screw holes. Uh, one in each corner, see one here and one here, and they're going to have little brass inserts in there so that I can use um, M3 machine screws to attach the top on. I could have just uh, screwed straight into the plastic, I guess, but uh, I've got a feeling I'm going to have to open this up and, and close it quite a few times, uh, and so eventually the plastic wears away if you don't use um, metal inserts. So I'm going to print this out. Um, it might work first time, it might not, but it's going to take a little while, uh, so I'll get back to you once I have a, a printed uh, prototype. So after a bunch of printing, um, these are sort of failed uh, prototypes that don't work for one reason or another, um, I ended up with uh, this. And I think it actually looks really nice. It looks remarkably similar to the uh, the Fusion model, which um, I'm quite quite happy about. Surface quality finish is not particularly great, but it doesn't really matter in this particular application. Uh, you can see here that I added some little uh, grooves here for the elastic to actually slot through in the bottom of this, uh, this top section. And uh, yeah, overall, I'm pretty happy with the way this turned out. So I'm planning to power the um, LEDs from the five volt pin here on the Arduino. Uh, and one thing I checked, I noticed while I was playing about with this, if I put the pin on the five volts and on ground, I'm actually only getting about 4.7 ish volts at this five volt pin just here. So my first thought was, well, maybe it's a USB issue. Maybe for some reason we're dropping a lot of voltage across the USB cable. So what I did then is I put the probe here on the voltage coming directly from the USB. And you can see from the USB uh, power supply there, 
we're getting basically bang on five volts. So it's not an issue with the uh, supply. So let's have a look at the schematic for the Arduino Nano and uh, let's see if we can find out why that is. So here's the reference design for the Arduino Nano and uh, let's zoom in a little bit here on the USB chip. And uh, on my board, it's not an FT232RL, it's one of those CH340s or something along those lines, because mine's, mine's a clone. Anyway, this component just here is the USB connector. And we can see VBUS, this is where the voltage comes uh, from the USB cable. It goes through a fuse, and then it goes to something called VUSB. So if we follow this along a little bit, I actually found VUSB again, just down here. And VUSB goes through this thing here, which looks like a diode, to the 5 volt rail. So this uh, diode here is an SS1P3L. So I looked up that uh, that part number and it appears to be a shock key diode. And if we look at the forward voltage drop across this, uh, we can see that it's about 0.35 volts. Uh, so that makes a lot of sense. That, that explains the 0.3.4 volt drop we were seeing uh, between the USB power and the five volt rail. So if you look back at the schematic again, uh, what we can see is that if you connect your um, Arduino Nano to V in, so an external voltage supply, this diode here is preventing that external voltage from going back into the, the USB cable. And that's all it's doing. So we can easily get rid of this. So what I'm going to do is remove this diode from the, the Nano. We'll get rid of that 0.3.4 volt drop. Um, I don't advise you doing this uh, unless you, you're absolutely sure uh, that you're never going to connect that V in pin. Um, on the Nano because uh, that will cause some problems um, if you try and do that while it's also plugged in via USB. Um, I know in this project I'm not going to do that um, so it's quite safe to remove this diode and I'm just going to bridge it. I'm just going to connect these two sides across so on the 5 volt pin we then get the full 5 volts not uh, 4.6, 4.7. Now we have all our parts uh, let's uh, put all these together so let's commence a uh, build montage. <laughs> then so all put together she looks pretty good so I'm quite pleased with how this has turned out uh, there are definitely a couple of things I would do differently next time but big thing is does it actually work I haven't plugged this in yet um, fingers crossed so here comes here it goes here's the moment of truth let's plug this in please light up Fantastic, so it is lit up, so it's quite uh, bright in here, so it's difficult to see the lights there, but they are working pretty well. If I press the mode button, does that work? Yep, the mode button's working there. Yep, fantastic. And um, can we change the brightness? So let's make it a bit brighter. And then it should go back to zero again at some point. There we go, so you can see the brightness works there as well. Fantastic. Okay, well that looks like a success. Um, so it's a reasonably neat little um, box here. It does fit quite nicely on the back of my head. I just put it on and it seems to work quite well. Um, I would change a couple of things. I think we need a bit more reinforcement here where the, the cables enter into the box. They're probably not going to last that long. Um, other than that though, I think it looks pretty good. Okay, hope you enjoyed that and uh, I'll see you guys next time.